What's happening in your left ear only is the new episode of Linoleum Knife, a podcast where we talk about movies. And by we, I mean Alonzo Duralde, who is not me. He's the author of um, Have Yourself a Movie Little Christmas, which is a very important book for you to go buy right now. Yes. Because it's December. Well, uh, technically it's still November, but it's after Thanksgiving. Which it's fixing to be December. It is the Christmas season for all intents and purposes. Yes. Uh, and across the table from me is Dave White, uh, who is the film critic for movies.com. And, oh, oh, what a week we have for you in this post-Thanksgiving podcast. Um, this week we are talking about burlesque, love and other drugs, and the movie that we were forbidden to talk about until the embargo ended, that we signed away our rights to discuss until the in embargo. In any format. There, yeah. was no tweet, no, there was no tweeting allowed, no Facebooking allowed, no reviewing allowed, no talking uh, in an official capacity Nothing. allowed. Is my mic on? Are you, are you, are you, is, Your are mic you is sure on? my mic yes. is working? I'm seeing the big wiggly working lines this and time? everything. Yes. All right. Relax. So anyway, so we'll be talking about that later in the program. Did um, you say the title? No, I want to keep the suspense alive. Oh, you still want to keep the suspense alive? Or we could tell Just say the title. Know. All right, fine. We're also talking about Nutcracker 3D. No, no, no. The official title, Oh, oh. the real official title of this movie is The Nutcracker in 3D. Ah. That's the title. Uh, sorry. Which I think is really kind of a funny way to title it. <laughs> That's the least of that movie's problems. Um, but anyway, so, gosh... Let's start with... Uh... Let's start with Nutcracker 3D. <laughs> okay, fine. Screw it. <laughs> we'll start with Nutcracker 3D. This movie uh, is the worst thing ever. Yeah, pretty much. You in know the how, world. You know how you're not supposed to eat mistletoe because it's poisonous? That's the same that can be said for watching The Nutcracker in 3D. You know how people feel about death? <laughs> That's how I feel about The Nutcracker in 3D. <laughs> And you don't mean like people in hospices. You mean like people who want to live. And I'm and I'm metal too. And I'm really into death as a <laughs> as a as a concept. But um, <sighs> yeah, yeah. So okay, so it stars Elle Fanning, who is a fine actress. You know, if you if you never saw Phoebe in Wonderland, I highly recommend it. And this movie is all her fault. Uh, no, <laughs> it's directed by Andre Konchalowski, who has, none of it's her fault. Who's actually. actually directed some good movies. He did Runaway Train, and he did um, one of my uh, favorite films you can't get on DVD, um, Shy People. With and then uh, he lost his mind with with the late Joel Clayburgh. And yeah, and and now I don't know what he was thinking on this one. It's weird. This movie, the the first credit that appears, it's not like blah 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 studios or blah 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 entertainment. It's some it's, bank. It's blah 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 bank. It's, it's like, like like some Estonian bank. <laughs> yeah, like like that, like that like, like somebody's funds were frozen in Budapest, and they were like, "Well, I guess we better make a movie then. <laughs> Let's make that Nutcracker 3D movie you've been dying to." <laughs> To get out there onto the and screen. Apparently, he has been trying to get this movie made for a long time. That's the well, really sad part. I, I can't believe that. That's what I read. I just it's because here's what happens. All right, this movie is take everything you know about the ballet, The Nutcracker, with music by Tchaikovsky, and take anything you might also happen to know about the original uh, German. Fairy tale. Fairy tale that was written by E.T.A. Hoffman that was called The Nutcracker and the Mouse King. Wow, you, you came prepared this I week. Know, I, know, I, know, I know my Nutcrackers. I, wow, okay, go on. Take all those things that you may possibly know about those cultural uh, products and let an elephant poop <laughs> all over it. <laughs> This movie, because what they do is they take those two <laughs> oh, things God. and they and they obliterate pretty much, them yeah. and go. You know what we should really do with the Nutcracker? We should make it more like Night at the Museum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, and yeah, that's sort of what they came up with. Uh, and Santa Claus conquers the Martians, <laughs> and any other like oh, and there should be Nazis. Nazi rats in it, and a rat with an Andy Warhol wig, and played by John Torturo, and Nathan Lane as Albert Einstein singing. Yeah. Oh, let's talk about the singing for a second. They hired Tim Rice to write lyrics for the Tchaikovsky music. Screw that dude. 
So he sat down not just, and no, 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 wrote. No, 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 no. you're not even explaining it. No, that's what he did. Yeah, he did, but they weren't even the. They weren't even the the. They took the sort of like the bare bones, like the greatest hits of, of the, the Nutcracker of the Tchaikovsky score for the uh, the and and sort of hip hop them into pop song structure yeah, oh and God. and then had Nathan Lane sing <laughs> and other song. people sing these songs. And, oh, it's it, it's there's a song about the theory of relativity. Yes, yes, there is. <laughs> this movie. There certainly like, is. I know we're making it sound like something that's so radical and demented that you think you might want to run out and see how ter- no, you don't trust me because it's it's agony. No. And and believe me, we're we're people who drove forty five minutes to see Insecure. So I mean, we can tell. No, that's a movie. Yeah, we can tell good bad from bad. Insecure bad. is something you need to watch. When yeah, when it comes on DVD, keep an eye out. The it's, letter N dash secure. It's sort of like the room, but urban. Right. <laughs> Right, but yeah, Nutcracker 3D, the Nutcracker in 3D. You do not want to endure. You certainly don't want to make your children endure it. Uh, it's just staggering. Your kids will murder you if you watch <laughs> if you make them watch this movie. And no jury in, in your the world sleep. will yeah. convict them. And the, the defense attorneys will be like, uh, but they, your were honor, to see. "They were forced to see the Nutcracker 3D." Case dismissed. Cl- clearly, these were abusive parents <laughs> who yeah. deserved the the beheadings they got in the if, night. If the Menendez brothers had seen this movie, they would have. It would have happened a lot sooner. That too. So yeah, that's it's. I, there's not a, a bit. Well, there's a little bit of dancing. A t- there's, there's one scene that part where they she dances with, with the fairies, the snowflakes, or something, something like that. Yeah. It's all very special effectsy, and it's there's a part where the sugar plum fairy, or something like a sugar plum fairy, ice skates. Oh music. yeah, it's a, sort of. But it's almost uh, like she's ice skating in the air. Yeah, I, like it's, it's mm. and. Then um, let me put it this way: You don't know what country anyone's from because half the people <laughs> sound like they're British, and then Elle Fanning has this American accent. Yeah, her father is Nathan Richard Lane e. Grant. is doing this, and know, then her mother is Russian or yeah. something. Nathan Lane's doing this sort of strudel and schnitzel yeah. sort of, you know, I'm German. Yeah, oh. that kind of accent. And I, I believe I read in the notes that it's set in Vienna in the twenties. Really. Yeah. Well, yeah. The the newspapers were German. Like I noticed there was something. I, yeah, it's bananas. There's this it? weird sort of like <clears throat> Holocausty sort of imagery going on. Yeah, with toys they being have to, burned they, in yeah, the factories. The, the bad mouse king wants to take all the kids' toys and burn them so that the cloud blocks out the sun <laughs> because rats are enemies of the light. Rats are enemies of the light. It's. Ugh. Horrifyingly awful, and, who, oh, and, I and this mean, is why they made us sign that and, release. And Eileen, they Atkins knew why they it. were. Oh sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. They knew what they were doing when they no, 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 us no, no. That I, I totally understand. After once we saw the movie, we were like, well, no wonder. Like they, they should right. have made us sign a thing that's saying we would never, ever, never talk speak about it. about it. Yeah, yeah. Eileen Atkins plays like the Rat King's mother. I mean, just here's the most baffling. The most baffling thing about it. I've been reading some good reviews. Yeah, that, I saw one on Salon today. I was like, whoa! I wish I'd seen Entertainment Weekly. I uh, wish I'd seen that movie. Lisa yeah. Schwartzbaum gave it a oh, good review. Gosh. And I can't. I don't know what I, she watched. Words that, fail me. I don't I, know. There's not a there's not a, a a justification for that. This movie is an abomination. Yeah. Like I I can't really stress. That's that not a word we throw around highly right enough. <laughs> it's. There's, Put it this way. Six, again, six weeks is no longer the worst movie to feature the Nutcracker. L. Fanning. <laughs> it's not her fault. She is a great. No, she's terrific. Little like girl actress, mm-hmm. like she's smart and poised and yeah. and and in that freaky adult way that her sister was right. at that age. Same thing. There's something going on in that family's genetic, <laughs> you know, makeup, laser-like uh, focus. Yeah, yeah. But, seriously, um, Phoebe in Wonderland. If you never saw that one, if rented, you if you want to see a movie version of the Nutcracker, that and you'll laugh when I tell you. This. No, I know what you're going to say. In the '90s. <laughs> They made one with the New York, like, Metropolitan Ballet. Right. With the Balanchine choreography. With the Balanchine choreography. And, okay, yes, Macaulay Culkin (laughs) as the Nutcracker Prince. And you know what? In Macaulay Culkin's defense in that particular movie, he doesn't really have to do a lot. He just kind of has to, like... Wave his arms here, well, and, wave his arms and, there, and he and had done it on and, stage, right? Like, I don't then know. He, yeah, I think he came from a background that included having done no the, the Nutcracker as a kid. So it was, it wasn't as, it wasn't but as shameless. This really as it nice. Seems, you know? They stick to the traditional thing. It's a ballet movie. Kevin Klein 
gives this really nice, warm sort of narration to to fill in the blanks. Does he play Albert Einstein? No. Oh, well, no. Okay. No. Dom DeLuise <laughs> plays <laughs> Albert Einstein in that version. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and Sandra Bernhardt is the little girl <laughs> in that version. Now, that one I want to see. That, yeah, I, that, I would watch that, that sounds too. like something that I would, would, be, I would, that would be right up my alley. Actually. But, yeah, I mean, I just, I just wrote a book about Christmas movies, and I thought I'd seen the worst ones ever. Uh, and, I mean, I can't even – I can't even – like, if I were to do another edition of my new book, Have Yourself a Movie Little Christmas, now available, uh, in my chapter of bad Christmas movies, I, I did bad movies that were fun to watch – yeah. This is not that. It is no, just... no, you also included Santa Claus the movie with Dudley Moore yeah. in your bad movies that are fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not fun to watch. It's, it's fun to watch that if you're, if you're, if you're in the watch. right mood or with no, the right mood. There's people. no right mood. It's, well, but this movie's It's not as bad as the Nutcracker. But Nutcracker in 3D, 3D is 3D worse. It's yes, worse. We agree on that. So. It is the worst. Okay. I, I don't know if I've seen a movie. A, a, a wide release movie this year that I have hated as much. <laughs> and like, you've seen a lot of movies. Remember Me might be. Mm. I may have hated that as much as this, maybe more. Actually, maybe a little more. Okay. Because it's just got that reprehensible uh, twist. Twist ending. Right. Uh, that's just gross and exploit exploitive. Uh, but this is, and this movie is simply merely gross, <laughs> is what this movie. So is. it's the winner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So okay. So we, I think we've we've covered our ground on that one. I'll be wanting to talk about it some more <laughs> as as memories surface, like when you're squeezing <laughs> like a really dirty sponge and the crud keeps coming up. <laughs> you can't get all the crud There's out of the image. sponge. If I happen to think of something else that okay. I have to say about that all movie, right, right. I'm just going to blurt it out. Okay. Yeah. And maybe we'll do a year-end show, and it'll, and yes. it'll be something to talk yeah. about. So, okay, let's move on to Burlesque, which is the movie that a lot of people were hoping was <sighs> going to be like this sort of incredibly bad <sighs> kind of showgirls, mm -hmm. glitter, you know, yeah. wild, campy, over-the-top mm -hmm. stinker. No. Um, and it's just... There, it's it, it's not. I'm getting sleepy just even. Yeah, about it's it. not. I mean, it's not good by any measure, but it's not epically bad either. I resent anyone calling Showgirls a bad movie in the first well, place. I, 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 I know I'm digressing here, <clears throat> but I think of Showgirls as a a deranged art film. Yes, not as a failure mainstream kind of movie. I see both sides of this argument. Yeah, it's sort of the way I'm with. I the, think Elizabeth Berkeley gives. Seriously, uh, I think Elizabeth Berkeley gives one of the most, like, indelible, go for broke, balls out. Well, she commits performances. She commits. Of no the question. 90s. She's not phoning it in. Like, yeah, she is front and center. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. I. I see. It's like. It's like. I, you know. Xanadu. I understand the people that think it's terrible, and I understand the people that Xanadu that, is that, terrible that adore it. Uh, show, I don't even want to watch Xanadu. Again, Showgirls. Ever. I understand the people who think that it is sort of a stealth art film, and I understand the people who think it's a camp classic. So, I, you know, I, I see both both sides of that. But burlesque is um, just um, just this thing. It's real boring. Yeah. So Makes me sleepy. Christina Aguilera plays a uh, an Iowa farm girl. She has a dream. Who has a dream. And uh, she takes a, a bus to L.A. It's and, really uh, important to have dreams, you guys. <laughs> so very You important. have to have a dream. And she wants it so bad. She even says that in the movie. Just give me a chance, she says, after her audition where Cher dismisses her. Because that was her chance. And I was like, well, you just had your chance. <laughs> she, you just auditioned. That's your chance. They, they, you don't watch even one episode of American Idol without knowing that that audition, that's your chance. Right. You get that? You, that, you had your chance. <laughs> and when they say no, you don't go, oh, just give me a chance. I can do it. Ah. You know, like it's. Well, yeah, it's the ones who try and sing a different song, that's when you know they're desperate. Right. But anyway, so, so yeah, so uh, Christina. But see, Cher doesn't have any good reason to dismiss her <laughs> no, after not that really. audition. Because she's Christina Aguilera. <laughs> she can sing. Like, until the building falls yeah, down. Yeah, well, it, you'll recall, though, in the audition, she doesn't sing. It's all dancing. Because nobody sings. Oh, yeah, nobody yeah. sings at the club oh, until... Right. They lip sync old songs. Right, until the, the night that, their... that the, the, the evil diva right. tries to, to, to ruin... Played by Kristen... Kristen? Kristen, Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. Veronica Maz. Not, not cast. 
properly. No, no. Because there's nothing. You don't. You're not scared of her. No. She's not. It's not. Like she's not. She doesn't intimidate anybody. No. <laughs> you know. She, and she's got this weird brown wig on that just doesn't. That may be her, her real hair. Oh well, uh, that might be her actual. She's, she she works better as a blonde, I think. Mm. But yeah, so you know, it's just it's a sort of every showbiz cliche imaginable, where you know she gets she gets at the last minute the star is drunk and she gets sent on stage in her place, and then the star tries to sabotage her, and so she sings live, and then suddenly everybody figures out, oh my god, she can sing like Christina Aguilera. And again, it's not this movie again is not Christina Aguilera's fault, nor is it no, Cher's no, fault. No, 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 they're fine. It's Steve Anton's fault <sighs> for writing a dumb trite. Ugh. script and for being a terrible director yes and and i'm still mad at him for inside monkeys that are and i will say this wrote and starred in like 20 years about, ago and i still get nightmares about you, that did, movie. you get over that movie. i uh, have you, you ever have you seen it? it i've seen it and it, it it's bad but it's not i know. have i had that movie gave me ptsd <laughs> seriously it's it's not the film critic it's kind. bad but it's not it's not it's not the nutcracker in 3d well it, in a way it is it is the indie film nutcracker in yes 3D. it is the sundance version of the nutcracker um, in 3d i would say share is if you're a big hardcore old school kind of gay kind of old share fan you're going to be really disappointed because she's not really in the movie all that much no no she disappears for long chunks of time and she and doesn't get much to do except sort of do except fret. Sing, sing a couple times. She gets one big like look, Diane Warren song. Look miffed and oh, there are three songs in the movie that have the word burlesque in the title. Such as that they have the word burlesque in that the are title. about burlesque that are explaining to you Excuse what burlesque me, is. It's like um, people paid to get in. They probably know what burlesque is, right. and if, if not, they, they found out the first number. You. You know? They tell you about how great it is to be at the burlesque club. They tell you about the, the lifestyle of burlesque. Um, and they don't even really do burlesque in this movie. Like the girls, nah. as somebody well, pointed out, skinny. Yeah, the girls are all like 30 <laughs> pounds underweight. Like they do they not have, have the, the curves and the asses. They don't, the, asses, they don't you know? have the curves for this, for this format. Yeah, yeah and, and, uh, and it's not clever or I mean it's – you know, Steve Anton's sister started the Pussycat Dolls, which should pretty much tell you that we're dealing. They're with not. They were never burlesque either. No, but the they Velvet thought they, Hammer Girls. Yes, but but they Pussycat were Dolls. Burlesque. But Pussycat Dolls basically coasted on the burlesque revival, but basically were the not as interesting Spice Girls. Right. But but yeah, so that that brand of fake burlesque is what you get in this movie too. Right. Cher, sadly, uh, can't really move any part of her face that's not the mouth. Yeah, and yeah. and I, I there are moments when she looks digital. True. It yeah, is, like a it, Navi or something. Like it's it's it looks like you've got almost like digital share on right. screen. Sometimes they've got her. They don't. They, well, again, he's such a bad director that he doesn't even know how to light the poor woman properly. No, or present her in a way that will make you you know think oh that's Cher I really dig Cher because right. there's nothing uncool about Cher no she's great Cher's never been you know uh, uh, Cher's never been anything but awesome pretty much her whole right career you know even when she's in crappy movies you're like well it's still Cher <laughs> you know and you know that she's kind of a badass in real life mm -hmm. you know um, and real political and, and stuff. She's cool. Yeah. You want the movie to be as cool as she is. Yeah, not it's happening. It's not. And Stanley Tucci pretty much does his character from Devil, Devil Wears Prada. Prada. He's like the, He's the, the, gay guy. the gay fairy godmother. This one gets laid at least, unlike the other character. Right. He, with the high, oh, and the DJ guy who I said he looked familiar. Yeah. He was the obnoxious Dr. Rick character from Fired Up. Who? What? <laughs> Nobody remembers this movie of me. Remember Fired Up, the, the, the I remember football seeing players it. go to stupid cheerleaders? cheerleading camp. Right. Movie. I thought it was funny. Anyway, there's the, the there's the, the main romance in the film. You were a soft touch that day. I thought it was funny. The lead the lead guy is in love with the girl, but she's got the obnoxious boyfriend who's like he's like a freshman pre med, but he calls himself Dr. Rick. And the whole running gag. Oh, is, and he's like he, he's always listening like to air supply and stuff. No, no, no. Yeah, like Ch Chumbawamba, like really lame old sort of nineties hits. Right. Anyway, that guy was the DJ in mm. Burlesque. He's the guy who has sex with Stanley too. Yes, <clears throat> in the movie. Um, and Christina Aguilera. I, base really the only reason you would want to go see this thing is if you are a hardcore Christina Aguilera fan, because she. It's a showcase for her. 
She's a singer. She's a singer. She's a singer. As an actress, she can walk and talk at the same time, and that's kind of all you need yeah. for her to, you know, move from one number to the next. She she doesn't embarrass herself. Like if she gets no, a, if yeah. she gets a Razzie nomination, not, that's just going to be bitterness because yeah. it's she like shouldn't she, be like she's, it, she's no Britney Spears in Crossroads. Exactly, that's for sure. No. Like that was a horrible <laughs> acting job. Yeah. This is like a simple sort of you know. Well, I'm here and I'm saying these lines and they aren't hard lines to say and they don't require yeah. much of me. And, and the main work is going to be when I start singing. Now, you just all sit back and watch me do this hard work of singing because that's when she lays it down. Like the girl is so technically proficient and so astoundingly good at this type of singing that she does, that sort of million notes in one syllable. Peel sort the of, paint off the walls. Yeah. <laughs> That, you know, you can only sit there and be impressed by her. Yeah. You can't sing along. <laughs> no, no, no. There's no. no singing along to Christina Aguilera. She, she you does You admire this, it at a distance. You admire it, yeah, at a distance. That's exactly what it is. It's, it's, not, un, it's not inviting. It's, no. just, it's just impressive. So, yeah, so uh, Dave actually reviewed it on Movies.com. I wrote a review for HitFix.com, and I also did a piece – for Salon about where burlesque fits Your very in. first in, piece in, on first, Salon. For Salon, yes. Uh, where it fits into the context of like gay diva camp movies. So yeah. check it out. It's not Well, check out what he wrote. That's what, yeah, no, no, not the, the movie. movie. No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah, you don't need about to that. Check out my article. <laughs> you don't need to be spending your money. I, I have gotten no less than three emails today. Yes, me too. From, from gay dudes. Who are so excited about So burlesque. excited. Who are like, Let's all go. <laughs> it's the way women like, went to sex in the city. Y'all have a good time. Yeah, I, um, I've suffered enough. I, I, I did my time already. Totally. With this movie. Okay. Um, love and other drugs. <laughs> here's the thing. Okay. It's a, no, it's, it, I'm, I'm, here's the thing. It's the, one with, it's, the, it's the one with Jake Gyllenhaal and Anne Hathaway boning a lot and being real naked. Yeah. Um, I was going with it for a while and then somewhere along the line, I just realized that it was trying to do too many things that it was not going to succeed at. Um, Cause there's like, it's a love story and it's a disease movie and it's a m- expose of the pharmaceutical industry. And, Hardly. Well, sort of. I mean, yeah, unfortunately Barely. it winds up not being any of these things really, or not doing any of them all that well. It's a dramedy. That's more drama than comedy. Than deep. It's a kind of comedy where you kind of smile warmly Instead of laugh out loud, right? Not just about any of it. Uh, I will say though that the one thing that the movie has that it coasts on for most of the way that probably made me kinder to it than I would have been uh, most of the while is that Jake Gyllenhaal and Anne Hathaway have really great chemistry. Like they're a cool couple. I would love to see them in a better written movie. Yeah, and I think she's she's kind of always on point. He just has to look. The way he looks, like yeah. he just has to show up and smile, and that he is that he is disrobed up his face for much and, of the film certainly helps. Yeah, but uh, they are they're both totally, almost totally naked yeah. in the entire movie. Uh, and 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 honestly, that's kind of a plus for me. And I'm not saying this in any sort of uh, uh, like ooh, I'm all turned on kind of way. What I mean is that it felt you know, French. back in the day, like. <laughs> In those early 70s movies where everyone was like, let's just take off our clothes, you know. Because, because we can now. Because we can. It's bold and we're making a statement about right. it's honesty, you know, freedom and, yeah. Um, and, you know, it's like, this is important to the part. We're going to be realistic about, you know, adult stuff. And right. if the people are going to have sex on camera, we're going to be naked on camera. And now all you see are these women with, like, no nudity clauses in their clothes. Yeah, like, the, so the, the sheet bra- up under the their armpits. The bra stays on and... You know, if a guy is going to walk around naked in the movie, there's like a vase <laughs> or something. <laughs> well, yeah, I, you know, oddly enough, in Burlesque, it's a PG-13 movie. The one naked ass you see in the film belongs to that Cam Gigante guy. I don't remember that. The, with the cookies. You see his butt. You see his butt. I don't yeah. remember that part. Yeah. But, you know, but yeah, but in... in, 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 uh, in I the, remember the cookies. That's, see, that's the thing I was thinking about, the cookies. Uh, I sure do like cookies. <laughs> You don't need nudity. You just want I don't give a damn kids. about Cam. What's his face? His naked butt. I just want really the like cookies. cookies. 
But yeah, so so at least love and other drugs. There's a lot of equal opportunity nudity, and but here's um, my big and, and it's and it's germane to the story about these yeah. two people and how they're relating to each other. They relate to each other through sex, and they they use yeah. that as a way to avoid uh, <clears throat> actual intimacy. Commitment. Yeah. Here's my problem with this movie. This could have been like nobody went to see Sicko, right? Mm. This could have been a smart, funny, romantic comedy that also addressed the idea of. Healthcare, which it kind of did from time to time. There's yeah. some like she has no health insurance or something because she's always pulling out giant wads of cash, right, to pay for where she gets this money. They never explain because she's an artist and she's got Parkinson's. And she's got Parkinson's, and that's not a spoiler. She it's like that right up early, front and center at the beginning. Yeah, um, and he works for a pharmaceutical corporation. No, he like, works for Pfizer, like by they name yeah, it, you know. In in the worst sort of kind of like, you know, relentlessly smarmy position that you can be, the the guy who goes to the doctor's, you know, and try to office and tries to te- tell them to, you know, to write prescriptions, to write for, prescriptions for their stuff. I my my dad was a doctor. I saw I used to see those guys come in the office and they were always just like my dad was always like, Is that where y'all got the keychain that said Doxadan? <laughs> oh, yeah. For all, a BM. And all the, the, what is it again? It's just, it's just, it was, do, do, I wish you still had it. Oh, that it was great. It, Doxadan, I don't know if it still exists. It's a, it's I don't a, think Doxadan still exists. Okay. It was, a, it, was a, it was one of those sort of slow acting overnight laxatives. And we had <laughs> this keychain hanging on a like hook near our door, and it said Doxadan in the PM. For a BM in the AM. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, I, every, I pretty much grew up in a house where every notepad, pen, and keychain had like drug names on it. He still has a ruler. <laughs> you Wait, love that. It's on the sh- I'm pulling it off the shelf right now. Yeah, so they can see it at home. I know, but it's this giant acrylic ruler, and on it it says Valium. <laughs> and it says the anxiolytic by which all others are measured. <laughs> See, because it's a promotional ruler. Because they measure. You're measuring things. the effect of this value <laughs> with this ruler. This is my favorite thing that you brought from your childhood <laughs> into our life. So yeah, so we would always have these like notepads and pens and crap. But but yeah, they were they were always super smarmy and just like selling. You know, they're always closing. You know, and that's the character that Jill and I was playing. And and because he's kind of vacuous ish as an actor, it, I think it's a perfect role for him to be playing that kind of. Charming, smarmy, but guy. the movie doesn't go deep enough or stabby enough with any kind of critique. No, of of that of that situation. Like the and, big plot twist is that he gets to rep Viagra. Yeah, and so when that's like, new. and they use that as an excuse to just show like people clamoring for Viagra, like a Willy Wonka golden ticket. It's not. <laughs> it's not a thing where where they where they ever once say you know. This woman has a real problem on her hands, you know, Right. where it's not just that he can't commit to someone who's got a lifelong degenerative illness or that she's afraid of allowing someone into her life because she has a lifelong degenerative illness. The, 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 they could have made the point of like that. Who's paying for this? Who's going to pay for this and how is this going to work? But instead what they do is this was this love. It's a sort of love conquers all love will fix it all. And and the ending I found to be very sort of smug and pat and self satisfied and it's this very liberal minded movie like Ed Zwick the thirty something guy directed it but who did like Glory right whatever and and well he okay he's the thirty something more guy. germane to this conversation he did about last night which was also right. you know like a young couple in the right. movie you know. But yeah, but you're right. There's a lot of opportunities for this movie to be about something or say something, and it doesn't take them. And had it been a better romantic comedy than or romantic drama or whatever, then that would be okay. But it's not that either. So it's not anything that if it could have been. If you've ever had problems with your health insurance, then this movie will feel like, you know, a smack in the face. <laughs> Well, yeah, it, it does exist in this sort of cloud cuckoo land where, yeah, where the artist has these wads of money that she's paying for her very expensive, you know, prescriptions and medical procedures for. And yeah, the, 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 the longer I spend away from having seen it, the less I like. Yeah, I, you're right. Like no, that, the, the, the ending where it gets all heartfelt and sweet and, and, and it's not it's not up. It, it, it's not bad. 
But then, now that I'm done watching it, the longer I stay away from it, the more I think, you know, f this movie. <laughs> yeah, well, it's 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 an ending they don't earn, you know, and and the, the, it just it, there's I like like I said I like the two lead performances. Um, I would love to see them in a better movie than this. Me too. <laughs> Maybe they could play Nick and Nora Charles or something. I don't know. No. Okay. No. But something. Something fun. Maybe they should be in the Nutcracker 3D. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two. <laughs> oh, God. Let there not be ever such a thing. Um, it is time for us to wrap up, but I will want plug to plug all your stuff. I want to plug all my stuff. You've got a lot of stuff to plug. I do. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, as we've mentioned a couple times, I have just written a book called Have Yourself a Movie Little Christmas, which is a perfect stocking stuffer during this holiday season. Um, uh, you can see me on Tuesday, uh, November 30th, on, on the, the History on Channel. On the TV. On the TV, on the History Channel, uh, in a new documentary called The Real Story of Christmas that airs at 8 p.m. Pacific and Eastern. He's Santa Claus. No, I'm not. Um, he totally is. And, uh, and I, I imagine they'll probably rerun it a bunch. But anyway, set your TiVos for that. And I am touring across this great nation of ours uh, in the month of December to flog this book, uh, which is why we're not going to be a new show for like a couple of weeks. For like two weeks. Because I'm going to be away. But and before <laughs> the new show happens, we're going to get that cable and get the question we answered. Are. And we're going to be in We're going to be in not, stereo. We're going to be in your right ear. We'll have the theme music back and everything. We, we're going to no, work We're not going to keep making you listen to us in just your left ear. <laughs> no. Anyway, but um, – here is my uh, my tour schedule, uh, and if you are in these cities or know folks in these cities, you know please come check it out or, or tell your friends about it. Uh, December second, I will be in Seattle, uh, screening Kiss Kiss Bang Bang at uh, Central Cinema with a three dollar bill with those folks. Um, on a Saturday, the fourth of December, I will be in Austin at the Millennium. Uh, I believe Youth Center, it's called. They've got a bowling alley and a movie theater. Check it out. Uh, and we're screening um, the Patrick Stewart version of A Christmas Carol. Why? It was their choice. I, 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 I don't know what that's about. I assume they I had don't some understand. good reason. I don't know. Maybe they had a copy lying around. Maybe they're big Star Trek fans. I don't know. But it's Maybe a, bowling, maybe when you're watching that movie, if you're bowling at the same time. <laughs> It makes it more interesting. It's a, it's a pretty good version. I mean, it's a, right, it's not sure. like they, they said they wanted to show the Jim Carrey A Christmas Carol or something. Sure. Uh, okay, so then um, Monday, December. They could have shown the Muppets Christmas Okay, Carol. look, I let them pick, so just relax. Monday, December 6th, I will be in uh, New York City, uh, specifically in Brooklyn, at uh, Rerun. And we will be showing the 1959 Santa Claus. Y'all better go to that. <laughs> Which That's is, the best Christmas which movie. Which is insane and wonderful. Ever. And uh, and Dave and I will be on the Popcorn Mafia in the beginning of December to talk about that film and other Christmas That's favorites. That's true. We uh, that's be, on uh, just, yeah that. December third uh, or fourth, I believe that one's going on. Uh, go to popcornmafia.com. Um, oh, and speaking of which, Santa Claus, both the um, unadulterated version and the Mystery Science Theater version, right. are now available on Netflix Instant. Like streaming, streaming, like on demand streaming. Yes, yes, they uh, are. And I believe it's y'all got you got Netflix streaming. You go stream it right now. <laughs> and then I think also that Santa Claus is airing. Your on, whole life is going to change. Yeah, it will. Trust me on this. Yeah, Santa Claus is also airing on um, TCM on Friday the tenth, and they're showing a documentary about the producer uh, K. Gordon Murray. Sweet. Yeah. So anyway, back to my tour. Um, Wednesday, December 8th, I am in Nashville, uh, <clears throat> back at my old uh, alma mater, Vanderbilt University, and we'll be screening uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas at Surratt Cinema. Um, and then what? Nothing. You're looking at me. I don't know. What I'm just doing. watching you talk. Uh, December 9th, I'm in San Francisco at the Castro Theater, the gorgeous historic Castro Theater, for a double feature of Gremlins and Black Christmas. Um, What's first? Gremlins is first. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Put the R-rated horror movie right after later. The- Later at night. After the PG rated it, horror movie exactly. for children. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be uh, doing uh, having a conversation with uh, our very good friend Jenny Olson. Really? Yeah. About Black Christmas? Just about Christmas Just about in general. Christmas yeah. in general. She's rad. Yes, we love her. Jenny Olson is awesome. So let's see. Um, Friday, December 11th. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I'm uh, back in L.A. and doing a midnight show of Home Alone at the New Beverly Cinema. And it is a rare big screen 35 millimeter presentation. And it's the 20th anniversary of Home Alone. Now you feel old. Yes. <laughs> uh, and there might even be 
guests because it's Los Angeles. You never know. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, okay. So then I've got a couple of days off. And then um, uh, Tuesday, the 14th of December, I will be in Dallas, Texas, actually in Fairview, Texas, at a store called A Real Bookstore. And I will be showing my uh, sort of quick clips of Christmas movies and signing books there. Um, and then on uh, the 16th of December, which is a Thursday, I will be at the Plaza Theater in Atlanta to screen I don't know what yet. They haven't decided. <laughs> but I'm sure it's going to be awesome, whatever it is. And then finally... Maybe it's going to be that Patrick Stewart a Christmas Carol. <laughs> Maybe. I should stop bad It's real. That. Yeah, what's I, your problem? I'm, I'm, Did you, have you even I'm seen it? discouraging people from going. Yeah, you quit being a douche. Just have you, go. Have you go. even seen it? I think I walked through the room. Oh, okay, a then times shut up. It's a good it. version. He makes a very good Scrooge. And Richard E. Grant I'm is in it. I'm sorry. Even though he was also in the Nutcracker in three. Sorry, years. Austin Theater. I'm don't blame it on Alonso. Yes. It's me being a Shh, dick. stop it. Uh, and then my last uh, date will be December twenty second in San Diego at the Gas Lamp fifteen, and we're showing Elf. Elf is great. Yeah. So it's going to be fun. So uh, there, I'm going to be uh, subject to a lot of pat All you people we December. know in San Diego, y'all better show up. <laughs> we know a lot of you people. So I've got, I've got, I've got full body pat downs or naked uh, scans to look forward to with all this flying. I suppose but. you need to get the pat down. I don't want you. You should not be going through the scans because it's like an X-ray every time you go. Through. Oh, I know, I know. They tell pregnant women not to do it. You it's cancer. Crazy. Yeah. Think of all the times you travel and you get – think about getting an x-ray every time you get on an airplane. No, I know. That's dangerous. It's bad for you. Yeah. Let them massage your junk. I, I that's way that. more – that's fun anyway. <laughs> way more preferable. Uh, and on that note, uh, we thank you for joining us. Uh, you can subscribe to us on iTunes and tell your friends to do likewise. Uh, you can drop us a line at linoleumpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, ask, us, ask, us ask us questions. Ask us questions. Make <laughs> comments. Um, but make them nice and spell them right. And, yeah, and don't complain about the audio. We know it's not good. Right. But we're we're, we're going to fix no, it. No, I'm not working on it. He's working on it. Yeah, we have we have experts who have volunteered to come over forward. 30 minutes? Just a little. All right, well, let's, let's knock it off. Then. Okay. Thank you for joining us, uh, and we'll talk to you in mid-December when I'm back in town. Bye. Bye.